O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The first psalm is Psalm 23, on page 356. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He shall feed me in a green pasture, and lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. He shall restore my soul, and bring me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou shalt prepare a table before me in the presence of them that trouble me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely thy loving kindness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> the second psalm is Psalm 115, beginning on page 480. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give the praise. For thy loving mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the nations say, Where is now their God? As for our God, he is in heaven. He hath done whatsoever pleased him. Their idols are silver and gold, even the work of men's hands. They have mouths and speak not. Eyes have they and see not. They have ears and hear not. Noses have they and smell not. They have hands and handle feet, feet have they and walk not, neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them, and so are all such as put their trust in them. But thou, house of Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their succor and defense. Ye house of Aaron, put your trust in the Lord. He is their helper and defender. Ye that fear the Lord, put your trust in the Lord. He is their helper and defender. The Lord hath been mindful of us, and he shall bless us. Even he shall bless the house of Israel. He shall bless the house of Aaron. He shall bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord increase you more and more, you and your children. Blessed be ye of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. All the whole heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath yet to give the children of men. The dead praise not thee, O Lord, neither all they that go down into silence. But we will praise the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> the first lesson is written in the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. After you have had children and grandchildren, and have lived in the land a long time. If you then become corrupt and make any kind of idol, doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God and arousing his anger, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you this day that you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live there long, but will certainly be destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and only a few of you will survive among the nations to which the Lord will drive you. There you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone, which cannot see or hear or eat or smell. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him, if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he confirmed to them by oath. Ask now about the former days long before your time, from the day God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other, has anything so great as this ever happened, or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, 
or by great and awesome deeds like all the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Besides him there is no other. From heaven he made you hear his voice to discipline you. On earth he showed you his great fire, and you heard his words from out of the fire, because he loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them. He brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you, and to bring you into their land to give it to you for your inheritance as it is today. Acknowledge and take to heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth below. There is no other. Keep his decrees and commands which I am giving you today, so that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. Here endeth the first lesson. Moses exhorts the Israelites to faithfully obey God's commandments. He reminds them of how faithful God has been to them, more faithful indeed than any other God. He has spoken directly to his people, has appeared to them in signs and wonders, and has brought them out of slavery in Egypt. In turn, they should be faithful to him. Such are the covenant terms he first made with their forefather, Abraham. In the defeat of sin and death through Jesus Christ, God's faithfulness reached a new, higher, and spiritual plane. As our Lord Jesus Christ himself declared in 1 St. John chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. As Christians part of the new Israel, you must respond to God's faithfulness and loving obedience, as Jesus charged in 1 St. John chapter 13, verse 34, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength in his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts, he hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Revelation according to St. John the twentieth chapter, beginning at the first verse. <clears throat> and I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil, or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him, to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil, who deceived them, was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Here endeth the second lesson. <clears throat> The self-offering of Jesus on the cross overcame the power of Satan. And so in this chapter of St. John's vision, we see the devil chained for a thousand years. Those who had been beheaded for their testimony are those who have striven against the devil and his forces of evil. They partake of the first resurrection, which is the rising to newness of life, that is the living of a Christian life here and now. Those who have risen with Christ in newness of life will have nothing to fear on the day of the general resurrection, when final judgment will take place. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who has given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefits, and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lies in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.